Today we'll be discussing autosclerosis. However, before we do that, it would be really nice if we could just review the development of the OTEC capsule, that is the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth or the OTEC capsule has various parts and it develops from the mesoderm around the membranous labyrinth, right? So we have the three semicircular canals, we have the vestibule, we have the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani which meet at a common junction that is the helicotrema. Now considering the various layers of the bony labyrinth, we have three layers in particular. We have the periosteal layer, we have the enchondral layer and then we have the endosteal layer. The enchondral layer is the one that ossifies later and forms via enchondral ossification, it forms the bone that is the bony labyrinth. However, there are some theories that suggest that autosclerosis is in fact a result of the remnants of cartilage that are present in this layer. So what is the definition of autosclerosis? Autosclerosis is a primary disease of the otic capsule characterized by abnormal removal of mature bone by osteoclast and replacement with woven bone of greater thickness, that is the spongy bone. So the reason why this is happening is that there are small regions of immature cartilaginous tissue that refer to as globuli and rosae. and normally bone remodeling does not occur in the bony labyrinth. Why is that so? We'll be just going over that in just a moment. As a result of this increased deposition of bone and osteoclast activity, we have formation of these blue mantles of manasse that are around the membranous, membranous labyrinth and a part of the bony labyrinth. So what is the epidemiology of autosclerosis? When we consider the histological autosclerosis, the male and female preponderance is equal. But when we come on to the clinical autosclerosis, it is observed that females are more vulnerable to autosclerosis than males. And it has also been observed that this the progression of autosclerosis it increases during puberty and pregnancy. The genetic inheritance of autosclerosis is autosomal dominant. The particular age that it affects is 20 to 30 years. However, it can range from 15 to 45 years as well. So what are the diseases that are associated with autosclerosis? We have osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a type 1 collagen disease. And what happens in osteogenesis imperfecta is that you have glycine getting replaced with any amino acid and as we know the glycine is the smallest amino acid out of all and that is why at every third place in the collagen chains we have glycine so as so that we can form a tighter helix when you have a replacement with any amino acid then the tighter helix get disturbed and then you get brittle bone disease that is osteogenesis imperfecta which is a type 1 collagen disease so it was also observed measles has a role in the pathogenesis of autosclerosis why is that so because the measles rna was found in the stapes foot plate and the measles antibody that is the igg antibodies against the measles antigen was found in the perilymph of people with autosclerosis so what is the pathophysiology of autosclerosis like i told you so that the bony labyrinth does not undergo bone remodeling why is that so because the type 1 fibrocytes that are present in the bony labyrinth they secrete osteoprotegrin what is osteoprotegrin as might be clear in this diagram osteoprotegrin is the one that inhibits rank ligand it inhibits rank ligand prevents its interaction with rank receptor and by inhibiting this interaction we have decreased conversion of osteoclast into mature osteoclast which further will lead to bone remodeling so these type 1 fibrocytes are often dysfunctional in case of autosclerosis and hence we have decreased osteoprotegrin and hence there is increased activation of rank and rank ligand pathway. So what are the phases? There are two histological phases of autosclerosis. We have the active phase. Now this active phase is actually concerned and is uh, predominated by dilated blood vessels containing osteoclasts by containing histocytes. Now this is the reason why these dilated blood vessels when they appear over the promontory we have something known as the Schwartz sign that occurs which will be going over in just a minute. After this phase that is the osteospongiosis phase or the active phase we have the osteosclerotic phase in which we have deposition of solid compact bone that is occurring. So as you can see the resorbed bone is replaced with dense bone with fewer blood vessels as compared to the active phase or the osteospongiosis phase. Now what are the types of osteosclerosis? We have two types of osteosclerosis in particular we can have the stapedial autosclerosis. The stapedial autosclerosis has been further divided into we can have an anterior focus then the foci can also be present posteriorly that is known as posterior focus then we can have a circumferential type of autosclerosis we can have a biscuit type of osteosclerosis in which the foot place is involved by the osteosclerosis of foci and then we can have the obliterative type of osteosclerosis in which in, in which autosclerosis in which we have the involvement of the anal ligament as well in the biscuit type of autosclerosis there was no involvement of anal ligament then we can have cochlear autosclerosis 
cochlear otosclerosis is that when the sides of cochlear otosclerosis are, it, it can involve the round window, it can involve the apex of the cochlea, it can involve the cochlear aqueduct as well as the semicircular canals. Now what, what exactly happens in cochlear otosclerosis is you could get a sensory neural hearing loss. Why are you getting sensory neural hearing loss in cochlear otosclerosis is as due to the otosclerotic foci, you have release of toxic products which can ultimately lead to damage to the outer and the inner hair cells. And that is the reason why you get sensory neural hearing losses. What are the symptoms of otosclerosis? It, it presents bilaterally as a painless, progressive, insidious, conductive hearing loss. And you can also get paracusive villicide. That is the patient hears best in noisy environments. So patient can present with tinnitus, that is especially in cochlear otosclerosis. And the speech of the patient has been described to be a well-modulated, monotonous and soft. What are the signs that you can see in the disease process? The tympanic membrane will show a particular sign that is a short sign which I told you about due to the dilated blood vessels in the otospongiosis phase or the active phase which, are, which can be visible through the promontory. Right? And that will give a flamingo pink appearance as you can see. The eustachian tube function will be normal. Renaise, when you conduct renaise with your tuning fork, you will get a negative renaise. That is the bone conduction is more than the air conduction. Why is that happening? Due to the conductive hearing loss. When you perform web, it will be lateralized to the air with a greater conductive hearing loss. Right? And when we conduct the absolute bone conduction test, it will be decreased in cochlear otosclerosis with sensory noodle hearing loss. Then we can perform a very particular test, that is Gillies test. What is this Gillies test? You can put positive pressure in the EAC. You can do it by a sigil speculum. When you do that, you're actually creating uh, increased pressure and that will lead to pushes the uh, tympanic membrane inward, it will push the ossicles inward and it will convey this positive pressure and that will lead to immobility of the basal R membrane and hence the, a normal person will hear less when there is positive pressure in the external auditory canal. However, a patient in which the, the CP's foot place is fixed due to the otosclerotic lesion, that person will not observe any difference in hearing and that is known as Jellies negative and hence you get Jellies negative in otosclerosis. When you perform pure tone audiometry, there is, it's an upsloping that is it first involves the lower frequency hearing loss. In case of sensory neural hearing loss, you can get a particular finding that is Carhartt's notch. This Carhartt's notch occurs, it is a dip in the bone conduction as 2000 hertz. Why is this Carhartt's notch occurring? It has been postulated that the ossicular resonance is maximum at 2000 hertz. And hence, when the disease process involves these ossicles and the stapes foot plate in particular, that leads to a dip in bone conduction at 2000 hertz. That's referred to as the Carhartt's notch. The AB gap may be positive or negative. The AB gap will be positive in cases of conductive hearing loss. And AB gap will be negative in cases of sensorineural hearing loss as well. So you can get the three types of hearing loss, that is conductive hearing loss, sensorineural, as well as the mixed type of hearing loss. When you perform tympanometry, you will get an AS type of curve and the stapedial reflex will be absent in case of stapedial fixation. Now what is this AS type of curve? That AS refers to sclerotic and hence the compliance of the tympanic membrane, it decreases at ambient pressure. And that is why you are getting an AS curve on tympanometry. What is the treatment of otosclerosis? Otosclerosis can be managed either medically or either surgically. Medically, you can manage it by hearing aids. And hearing aids are particularly effective in the early stages of the disease and when the patient doesn't want to opt for surgery or the surgery is contraindicated for any reason. The medical management consists of sodium fluoride. Why are we giving sodium fluoride? Because sodium fluoride inhibits the proteolytic enzymes that are cytotoxic to the co cochlea. That is one of the functions. The second function is it inhibits the osteoclastic bone resorption as well as stimulates the osteoblastic bone formation. And then it also slows the progression of sensory neural hearing loss, as I told you, by inhibiting the proteolytic enzymes that are responsible for destruction of the cochlea. Then the last surgical procedure, the surgical procedure that is total or partial stepidectomy, or we can do a stepidotomy. Stepidectomy means removal of the stapes foot plate and its replacement with a stapes prosthesis. That is the Teflon piston stapes prosthesis. Or you can do a stepidotomy that you can create a hole in the otosclerotic stapes foot plate.